Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in the short game video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with Ryzen 2, specifically some specifications which have leaked of the upcoming processor, if you believe the rumours, of course, and then we're going to move over to GDR6, because the product has finally, officially been launched, and what we're seeing here is chips which have up to 16 GB of capacity and run up to 18 gigabits per second. But with that said, I do want to also say at the beginning of this video that uh, this is going to be one of the last videos you see of me anyway for the next couple of days other than a couple of pre-recorded ones because I'm going to be on a short holiday to Norway. But uh, Amy of course will still be producing content. Uh, I'll produce videos tomorrow but I don't think I'll be here Saturday because I'm going to be uh, swanning off towards the hotel because I've got a plane to catch from Stansted Airport, but I'll be back on Thursday. Um, and one small last little thing, uh, I will be also traveling to America, Seattle. That will take place on the 27th of March. I'll be there between about two to two and a half weeks. I have a flexible ticket, so I'm not quite sure how long I'll be there. So once again, if uh, anyone does want to meet up, you can email me directly at paul at Red Gaming Tech, and we can organize something. With that said, let's begin. So, as I just mentioned, the first thing we're going to start things out with are the Ryzen 2s. And what we have here is most likely an early engineering sample of the Ryzen 5 2600. So it does have a fairly complex uh, code name for the processor, but um, from what we can gather, given the Sysoft Sandra leak, we're looking at a clock speed increase so far of just 200 megahertz, which is somewhat disappointing to many users. Now, don't forget, there are a small set of changes in the architecture of the uh, Ryzen Pluses. And one of those, of course, as I've mentioned numerous times now, uh, from what we understand, are tighter timings for the cache. So that also will help to make up the deficit. But there are a couple of things before you start going, ah, no, it's only 200 megahertz. One of the primary ones is that it's still an engineering sample. And don't forget that if you were to look at the history of, let's say, the original Zen, for quite a long time, they were only running at like 3 gigahertz, and then it wasn't until later that we saw, of course, a range between, let's say, you know, the 3.8 to the 4 gigahertz on the top end that we have now for, let's say, the 1800X or the 1600X. Things can still change, um, and I don't really feel that this is indicative necessarily of the final clock speeds, so don't start panicking just this moment. The CPU is still going to be based on 6 cores, 12 threads, thanks to SMT, and still 16 megabytes of level 3 cache and 3 megabytes of level 2 cache. If that, of course, sounds familiar, well, it should. It's exactly the same layout in terms of memory amounts, anyway, and quantity as the previous generation. Just like how Zen, the original, debuted in April of 2017, AMD have confirmed that the improved architecture also known, of course, as Zen Plus or Zen 2, if you prefer, is going to debut this April, which is, of course, April 2018, if you're watching this at some point in the future. The Sysoft Sandra entry also makes mention of the Asus Crosshair 7 Hero motherboard, which, of course, is going to be based upon the X470 chipset. Now, for those who haven't been keeping necessarily up with the Zen news, it's imperative to remember that this is not the full-blown Zen uh, free, and that of course is going to definitely bring rather large architecture changes. Instead, Zen 2 is just tweaks based upon a smaller node. It's going, sh it's shifting from 14 LPP to a 12 NM node, and small tweaks in the architecture itself, as I just mentioned, for example, the cache size. The true successor is going to be based on Zen 3, and that's not going to debut until, you know, sometime in the future. Later this year, we will also see the introduction, as AMD themselves have confirmed, of the Threadripper 2 architecture, as well as the Ryzen Pros for, of course, the professional market. And so I'm getting quite frequently at the moment is, should you wait for the Ryzen 2s? Well, unfortunately, that answer can only come from within. Certainly, there are benefits of waiting. Obviously, you're going to get higher clock speeds out of the gate, better caches, uh, speeds anyway, which should, in theory, improve the performance in games. But there's also the cost and the fact that you have to wait. Now, when it comes to the 400 series platforms, there are certainly a couple of benefits. Primarily, you get PCIe 3.0. In other words, you get higher speeds, communication speeds around the board. 
So if you're gonna be plugging in a lot of graphics cards, so you're doing Crossfire, or you're just gonna be hammering the system in general, lots of IO, then I can certainly see that it's a very appealing decision to wait. But once again, it is still about three-ish months away now to wait. Plus, of course, you're gonna be paying about 30, possibly 40% more for those products. Uh, depends obviously on whether we get uh, any scalping slash uh, the quantities available on launch and the normal things really. Plus, of course, it's a new platform, so maybe there might be a few bias hiccups. I doubt it because it is only a tweak of an existing architecture. So I'd kind of weigh those pros and cons myself. Okay, so let's move over to the next piece of news, which is Samsung's announcement that they are indeed launching the first 16 gigabit GDDR6 memory. Now this is important for two reasons. One, it doubles the density compared to GDDR5, and it also substantially increases the speeds, both of which are obviously imperative for high-end graphics cards. So I'm gonna read out a statement once again, from Samsung, this is going to be verbatim. I don't have my glasses on, so I'm going to have to move the, um, the phone just a little closer to my face. Beginning with the early production of the industry's first 16 GB GDDR6, we will offer a comprehensive graphics DRAM lineup with the highest performance and densities in a very timely manner. This is according to Jinman Han, who is the Senior Vice President of Memory Production uh, planning and application engineering at Samsung. By the introduction of the next generation GDDR6 products, we will strengthen our presence in the gaming and graphics card market and accommodate the growing need for advanced graphics systems in the automotive and network systems. Now it is built, just so we're clear here, and I'm gonna read this once again verbatim so I don't mess any of the uh, specifications up, but it is built on Samsung's 10NM um, class process technology. And once again, this is verbatim from their press statement. Uh, it has the new GDDR6 memory comes in 16 GB density, which is double that of the company's 20 nanometer 8 GB uh, GDDR5 memory. And new solutions perform at 18 gigabits per second uh, pin speed with a transfer of 72 gigabits per second GBPS, which represents a more than twofold increase over the 8 GB GDDR5 five with its eight GBP pins. Now, and also importantly, this actually uses less energy. How much less energy? Well, about 35% less over GDDR5 running at um, 1.55 volts. So this one uses, I just want to clarify, yep, I thought it was 1.35 volts, which is obviously a substantial saving. Now this means that not only can you have the same width memory bus and put out considerably more bandwidth and also uh, have higher capacitors on a graphics card, but should you desire, let's say a graphics card now, let's take the GT, um, sorry, the GTX, I was about to say GDDR, the GTX 1060, you could have a much narrower memory bus and also still have the same quantity of RAM but also continue to keep that same memory speeds because obviously the RAM is clocked higher. There are a couple of maths here. Um, so if you're going with the high-end HBM2, uh, the highest, the fastest memory at the moment is 2.4 GBPS. That's on a 4096-bit bus. You're looking at around 12. 129 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth, or with a single stack, that is 307 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, which is still very, very, very impressive. 18 gigabits per second GDDR6. Well, if you are using a memory bus, which is wide enough, a 384-bit memory bus, then you're looking up to 864 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, or on a narrower bus, 576, if you're just using a 256 bit, which is still an awful lot of memory bus. It's still considerably higher than, let's say, a GTX 1080 or even a TIE could put out. And that, of course, is gonna be definitely standing us in good stead for the next generation. Anyway, with all of that said, I'm gonna stop recording, and uh, I've got a lot of editing to do, my friends. But normal stuff, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.